am senior chief Leko Alabi. My year Ulubadon of Ubadoland and the first cultural ambassador of the National Museum and Monument Lefe. I came about the noble profession of journalism by destiny and design. Design, as you would say, is a babeni, a bishe, yoreni, conche, a sawo. By design of old oil states, that is present day or Yuan Ocean states from 1983 to 1989. And the civilian governor was the avatar, brain box, Kikero of SOK, the late Chief Bolaigi San, and retired Major General Lada Kukola, who then was a lieutenant colonel, the late Brigadier General Adetunji Oluri and the late Brigadier General Shasha Inia Ore Sonya. Those were the four governors whom I served as press secretary in old oil state between 1983 and 1989. I've always said this, journalism makes a true professional with integrity, jack of all trades, and master of all, master of all. In the sense that a journalist, as you are doing now, who is going to do an interview, must do research, read lots of books, and be steps ahead of his guest, the interviewee. In any profession, I give you an example. 1981, or thereabout, the late Professor Toriola Shulanke the darling husband of Nigeria's first lady son, Chief Mrs. Folake Sholanke, was appointed the president of West Africa College of Surgeons. It was a big feat. So he was my guest on my weekly program on NTA Badon, Speak Out program. Speak Out was a 30 minute current affairs personality interview program. But going to interview Professor Toriola Shulanke, world class surgeon, needed that I read books on medicine, his background. And during the interview, in the old system, which, which was the era of pneumatic tapes, you will need to break the interview to insert. A second tape. So in the process of breaking the interview and inserting a new a new uh, pneumatic tape, Professor Shinka now said, Leko, sorry if I embarrass you. Did you drop out of medical school? I said, sir, why did you ask? He said, you are using technic medical technical jargons. That's what a, a good journalist should be. Get familiar with the topic, get familiar with your guest, get familiar with any topic under the sun and be masterful. My appointment as the first public affairs manager of Udua Investment Company Limited again was divine. Divine in the sense that during the civilian governor's era, UPN days of Chibola Gioyo State, the late Chibisi Yonobanjo of Ogun State and the late Chief Adekunle Ajashi of Ondo State. Those three states were the original owner states of Odua Investment Company Limited. They rotated the meetings of Odua among the state capitals, Ibadan, Abekuta, and Akure. But when the military came, General Buari and General Diagbo, when they came on the scene, 31st December 1983, they stopped the rotational meetings of not only Udua Investment Company, but also of the New Nigerian Development Corporation, NNDC of the North. They ordered that the meetings be held in Ibadan and Kaduna. So the Lord fell on me as press secretary to organize, arrange 
for the meetings, particularly the publicity aspect, protocol, interviews, and all that. So when the late Brigadier General Oresonia took over as Mitch Governor for your state, he noticed my actions, particularly whenever we do have meetings were coming up. I didn't know. And he was making inquiries behind me. If I was being paid for the services being rendered, protocol publicity to Odua Investment Company Limited. And the answer I got was that I was just doing a pro bono, free. So after I had left his service on March 30, 1989, as his press secretary, and I was granted three months leave to rest, it was then that Brigadier General Oresonya made further inquiries and found out that I was doing additional <laughs> PR publicity job for Odua without a penny. And he decided to consult his two colleagues, then uh, Cap Navy Captain Bode George of Ondo State and the late Navy Captain Mohamed Lawal of Ogun State, that his press secretary, he was referring to me, had been combining the duties of press secretary with that of Odua without Odua giving me anything of notice or noticeable as gift. Then told them, since Odua did not have a PRO, not even a PRO department, he would want his, his uh, colleagues, Navy Captain George and Mohamed Awa, to support his move that I be employed as the first Public Affairs Manager of Odua, and it was done. I didn't, I didn't, what do, what's the word now? I didn't beg for the position. Neither did anyone lobby or his colleagues. It was just an announcement from the blue. More so on the day I was leaving Ibadan for the 1989, 1989 Hajj that Odua board met in the Mitchell Governor's Office Ibadan. I'm... The announcement was included in the communique to the surprise of the management of Udua because it wasn't discussed at that meeting. It, it was just made one of the communique. Lekwan Labi has been appointed. Approval has been given by the Board of Directors of Udua Investment Company Limited for the appointment of Mr. Lekwan Labi as the pioneer public affairs manager of Udua. And that was it. My mentors, oh, there are many. You need to read my article written about 21 years ago titled 30 cheers to my mentors my mentors the greatest mentor after god almighty was my paternal grandmother mama odola alabi but that is biological primordial yes but my teachers primary school secondary school particularly the late Mrs. Margaret Odu, former Mrs. Margaret Spiff, and so forth. There are many. Unfortunately, some are dead, but some are still living. But you need to read that article because I pay dues respect to them. See, this moment, I wonder why they allowed me so close to them, allowed me to step into the inner chambers of their homes and hearts, thereby enabling me to study and imbibe their qualities, values of hard work, integrity, and whatever anybody may say they find valuable me, I borrow some from my mentors. And they were all successful individuals, hardworking, but rewarded by God with good reputation, wealth, wisdom, and respect. Like any grateful individual in the world should. That means, ah, so all one's past activities, professional, social, cultural, traditional, have not gone unnoticed. 
And there is a saying, it takes excellence to recognize and reward excellence. The Fiban or your state chapter executive, I give it back to them now, that ah, it's because they too are men, they are men and women of excellence. Hence their decision to honor me. On this year's UNESCO World Radio Day, February 13, 2023, and my 50th year of practice as a journalist because I was employed by the Sketch Publishing Company Limited in October 1973. I served the three-month probatory period and my, I was given my first staff identity card of Sketch, January 1, 1971, 1974. That's why we are celebrating my 50th year of practice. Uh, and I also, I, now I reflect. As they say, you are going to reap whatever you sow. So now I am more than convinced that I'm reaping what I to have sown in the past. Recognizing and rewarding excellence. Promoting people and causes without expectation of a kubu but all in the act of letting the society particularly the young ones know there is value in excellence unfortunately in the country today well parts of the world all is not about money all is not about money but we need money to buy credit. <laughs> uh, credit telephone, credit uh, NEPA bill, um, feed the house, uh, dress well and all that. But the topmost value is please do your work professionally well. Some people somewhere are taking notice. That too I have role models. Some are dead, some are living. Like the chairman of the uh, Radio World Day celebration of me by Fiban, Ademo Lucia Gonshoba, is our senior. And some of his colleagues who are dead, and some are still living. I want the upcoming journalists, practitioners of PR, and anyone in communication world to go to school, be well educated, discharge your duties professionally with honor and respect. When you are in the news department, there shouldn't be any coloration. News is news. That's what they say in journalism. Fact is sacred. Opinions are free. So those who are on editorial line, futures and co, yes, everybody has a right to have an opinion. But your opinion must be balanced. That's what I want. My, my prayer is that God will continue to honor them because they are men of honor. Women are men of honor. Two, we will be able to tell you that we are not going to be able to tell you that we are not going to be able to tell you that we are not going to be able to tell you that we are not Column two, ma, we are on Oga, who will be on Oga. I'm okay, I'll be 73 next October. Column Jack came in, we'll go. Lika Alabi is a journalist, an author, a public relations consultant, a syndicate columnist, and a motivational speaker. He's currently the mayor of Lubado of Fibadon Land and cultural ambassador of National Museum, Ileife. He was born on 27th. October 1950 in Ibadan, Oyo State. Oloye Lekan Alabi attended Seventh Day Adventist Primary School, OK for Ibadan, in 1958 to 1963, and was class captain from Primary Two to Primary Four, school mayor in Primary Five, and school prefect in Primary Six. He attended African Church Grammar School at Kataganga Ibadan. Between 1964 to 1969, he was a class teacher 
at St. John's Anglican Primary School, Akeajo, near Arulogu Ibadan, from 1971 to 1972, from where he took employment as the first editorial assistant at Onibaoje Press Limited, Ibadan. In 1973, he was employed by the Sketch Publishing Company Limited, Ibadan, as a reporter, writer, reader, great tool. He became the company's youngest and first dual columnist, also in Nigeria. Oluyi Likalabi went to famous college of journalism, Fletch Street, London in 1976, and did his graduation in 1978. He came back to sketch and resigned from it to join Nigerian Television Authority, NTA Badon. He was there from 1978 to 1982. In 1982, when the present Broadcasting Corporation of Oyo State was established. It was then known as Television Service of Oyo State. It was one of the pioneer editorial staff when the station started transmission on October 30, 1982. Ulue Lekalabi was the first reporter to appear on the channel and also the first chairman of the station's chapel of the Nigerian Union of Journalists, NUJ. In 1983, Oloi Likalabi was seconded as a press secretary to the late Chief Polaigi, then Governor of Old Oyo State, today's Oyo and Ocean States. Oloi Alabi was recalled from his sack in 1984 by the new military governor of Oyo State, then Lieutenant Colonel Ola Dayo Popola, recalled that Dr. Omalulu Lulu of the MPA, who Fedekuk declared the winner of 93 governorship election in Oyo State, sacked many civil and public servants accused of being Bolaige UPN loyalists. He was press secretary from 1983 to 1989, so he served four governors, three military officers, and one civilian for a period of six years. In recognition of his professionalism and loyalty, the government of the owner states of Odua Investment Company Limited in 1989 appointed Oloi Alabi the first public affairs manager of the conglomerate after 17 years of dedication service to the Yoruba economic patrimony. He voluntarily retired from the Odua Group in 2006. As the first general manager, corporate affairs take two. As the first general manager, corporate affairs, Oluya Alabi is the chairman of the Adegoki Adela Bukman Kalemes Foundation and the Yusuf Olatoji Babalegba Foundation. He is the trustee of the Adekule Faji Foundation, the Ofagoa Foundation, Duro Ladeko Foundation, among others. In 2013, he was conferred with the Honorary Doctor of Letters, degree by Achievers University of War, Undo State. Oloye Olalekan Alabi is married and blessed with adorable children and grandchildren. <laughs>